Dear President Milatovic, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends from ATA Montenegro, it is an honor for me to address such a distinguished audience, and I hope that next time we will be able to come to beautiful Montenegro and meet in person. We at NATO value our excellent, long-lasting cooperation with ATA Montenegro. ATA organizes the To Be Secure Forum every year in close cooperation with our team. This forum is an excellent example of the civil society partnerships we rely on to help build relationships and communicate with our great allied audiences. The conversation is especially important for us this year as we celebrate NATO's 75th anniversary, a remarkable occasion and one of which we are very proud. NATO has a long and successful history of safeguarding the freedom of our community, a community that now includes 32 allies and their 1 billion citizens on both sides of the Atlantic, including most of the Western Balkans. Allies choose to join NATO and work together in the alliance because they see that NATO is the best way to deter and defend against old and new threats and to protect their freedom and sovereignty. And our alliance is stronger and more secure because Montenegro is an ally. Among its contributions, Montenegro supports our shared security by deploying troops to our longest and largest mission, K4, which is key to regional stability and to our advising and capacity building mission in Iraq. Montenegro also contributes personnel to our battle groups in Bulgaria and Latvia, helping to deter Russian aggression. This year, we were very honored to welcome President Milatovic to our flagship event, the NATO Youth Summit in Miami. He spoke about the hopes and aspirations of the Montenegrin people as they watched the enlargements of the European Union and NATO. He described what joining NATO in 2017 has meant for Montenegro's national security and sense of identity. This very open and authentic message resonated deeply with youth audiences from around the world, engaging them in what NATO means today for each ally that has decided to join our Euro-Atlantic family. This anniversary year has been an important one for NATO, a year of reflection and of aspiration for the community we have created, a community based on our shared values, democracy, freedom, and the rule of law. A community that has stood together to face challenges in the past and stands united to face challenges before us. Foremost among these challenges, Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine has shaken your Atlantic and global security. Now more than ever, we stand strong in the face of aggression with the sense of purpose that has maintained the Euro Atlantic bond for 75 years. NATO has two main tasks when it comes to Russia's war against Ukraine. To strengthen our own deterrence and defense to prevent the war from escalating beyond Ukraine's territory, and to support Ukraine's right to self-defense enshrined in the UN Charter. NATO allies take these tasks very seriously. We are ensuring we have the capabilities to protect against any threat, and we are providing unprecedented financial and military assistance to support Ukraine. We are all well aware that this brutal invasion is not only a war at our doorstep. It is a conflict that has implications for the security of other areas of the continent and the alliance. This includes the Western Balkans, a region of strategic importance for our alliance, as reaffirmed by our heads of state and government at their summit in Washington this July, and by our acting Deputy Secretary General on his recent trip to Podgorica. We are closely monitoring developments in this region, as these directly affect stability in the region and our collective security. I will focus on one pernicious threat to the region, foreign malign interference, including disinformation. Information manipulation can have a direct impact on the security of the Alliance and that of our partners. We know that this is an issue of concern for Montenegro as well as many other allies. Hostile information attacks are, of course, not new, Russia, China, and other state and non-state actors are continuously using tactics to manipulate the information environment for a variety of reasons. But Russia has intensified its efforts in parallel to and as part of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, including using information manipulation strategically as part of the preparation and execution of its war. At the summit in Washington, the heads of state and government recognized this threat. They committed to continue to develop our individual and collective capacity to analyze and counter hostile information to protect the values at the core of our alliance. 
In an increasingly complex and contested geopolitical context, characterized by polarization and conflict, NATO must convey its messages, objectives, and actions to audiences successfully. Our Public Diplomacy Division has redoubled its work to combat hostile information, including intensifying our partnerships in this shared fight. Here are some ways we are tackling this challenge. First, investing in technology. We are adapting to the changes in the security environment as well as to advancements in technology used to communicate. We are investing in tools that will help us understand and track bad actors who operate outside the international rules-based order, and tools that allow us to leverage our own communication to reach and build resilience among our populations. Second, ramping up coordination. Within the Alliance, we identify threats, alert each other, consider response options, and examine interlinkages with other threat domains. We cooperate with international partners, including the G7 Rapid Response Mechanism, the EU, the UN, and the OSCE. And last, but certainly not least, joining forces. Because on such an asymmetrical battlefield, fighting information threats is everybody's business. We stand with individual countries as well as civil society institutions and partners to build resilience. We invest in and engage with our partner institutions like ATA Montenegro. We stand with and support an independent and free media, including independent Russian media. We communicate together to reach people across the information space as well as in person. We tell the truth together. The challenge is deep and much work remains to be done, but our joined approach is always greater than the sum of its parts. I once again thank ATA Montenegro and all of you for your participation in this conversation and the critically important work of furthering Euro-Atlantic integration in the region. We have achieved much over the last decades. And as a community of like-minded nations united under common values, like the principles of democracy and the rule of law, I'm confident we will meet the challenges ahead. I wish you a successful and fruitful discussion. We are with you in spirit, if not in body, and hope to be able to visit soon. Thank you.